Hello back to North Cornwall and um, it's a sunny day but I'm going to be doing a comparison on a gas stove and a hobo stove. Now it's not a technical um, comparison and it's not a comparison that's going to be aimed at making you decide which to take or which to use. It's just a little bit of fun. I use both. Um, I've used a hobo stove, something along this lines. <laughs> quite simply because it's free it sticks you use it contains the fire so you don't have the danger of it uh, should we say creeping outwards the fire you do have to be careful because the bottom does transmit a lot of heat to the ground so you can get um, should we say conduction to the earth I use a stand which I've manufactured um, which you have to if you're going to be using this I would suggest but um, it does come with one huge disadvantage and I will show you that is here all your equipment will end up with a horrible gunky tar now it's not soot it is actual tar because a hobo stove as much as people will say it burns hot and fast it goes through twigs or sticks fast but it's not an entirely extremely efficient burn. It will cook, it will produce heat, it will produce flames, but it will produce a tarry substance. And at least that's my experience. And I've made a variety of different sized cans and different models. But, um, you know, you can go online, you can find out how to make them yourself. Um, you know, they're cheap, inexpensive, and they're good fun to play about with and try the various different models you can make. But overall, I found you can cook, you can heat, you can produce a flame and a fire within the confines of some degree of safety. But ultimately, they produce smoke, they produce tar, they produce, um, you know, uh, a, a degree of inefficiency that uh, you don't get with a gas stove. Now, I'm going to compare against a very old gas stove. Uh, <laughs> I've used this in a former occupation where other people had the newest, latest, I'm going to use the word dogs, bollocks, uh, gas stoves. This still did me fine. Um, £3.49 for a gas cylinder versus free sticks for the hobo stove. So there you go, straight off the bat. That's one disadvantage. But the soot that you get on your cookware and everything can be wiped off in some cases with just a humble baby wipe without having to use a scotch bright or any other means of abrasiveness to clean it up. So, you know... <laughs> this has a major advantage and it's portable i can swing these um these legs all the way around they'll all come around and it will just drop down into a pocket nice and uh, clean safe and there's no mess this doesn't collapse down in any form whatsoever you and um yeah it's dirty it's sooty and you know you have to Bear in mind that you're transporting something of this nature, which is dirty. So, but like I said, I've taken both with me and um, I do, I do still use this over the new modern fireboxes, believe it or not. Um, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll uh, fire them both up, have a look and time how long it takes to heat a cup of water and this is a stainless kind of cup I take with me I'm gonna measure out some water put in a can each like this and we'll heat it up and see how long it takes how efficient each one actually is um, this isn't for any scientific purpose or trying to convince you this is simply a bit of fun to explore the benefits and disadvantages of both methods. Right, so you can see I've got the stove. I've got my um, stainless steel cup, the one I take with me if I'm out and about. And that's going to be the measurement of water. 
two empty cans. You can see they've both been fired. They were used a long time ago to, to heat water and stuff like that for myself. I've got a degree of metalwork there which I take with that can which goes inside. And that allows me to provide some shielding to divert some of the heat up onto the um, actual cooking surfaces. Um, I'm not going to go into what I've done and how I've achieved it because, like I said, you can find all that out online and find different methods. Over there, I haven't got twigs, but I've got leftovers from hiking sticks I've made, which is of hazel, which is what type of wood you would find out and about here in the UK. And I've split down into the rough size that you would possibly use while you're out wild camping or bushcrafting. Now these cans, I will measure out water in there, a full uh, cup full, I'll tip in there, I'll get both these lit, I'll put them on and we'll time using the trusty Garmin which uh, I've just had charged up and it was recording a really strange time but it has come back to being the right time. Um, don't know what was happening with that. Uh, it, took a time to fire up and and realize what actual time it actually is but yeah what we'll do is we'll time how long it takes to boil a cup full of water in these to give a fair comparison but what I've got to do is get these going that one if you look inside I've got a load of leftovers from when I was making my longbow, some wood shavings, and that's hazel also. I will be using a fire lighter. I don't have a ferrule rod. I've lost mine a few good few years ago. And this is what I take with me anyway. So let's just do a fair comparison. A lighter, I drop that in, feed some sticks, put this on, put the can of water on, build my firework, to, um, build my fire, and use this as my uh, fire guards around just to direct the heat onto the can as so with this as well and that allows me to heat up the water this here is pretty straightforward there's water straight on the can straight there and off it goes and we'll see how long it takes for each one to actually boil up a can of water so there's no cheating, I'll just let you see, I'm measuring a cup of water, that's a full cup of water there, in one can, filling up the next cup, and in that one there. You can see what I was talking about. I actually have manufactured a hollow stand which keeps it off the ground and lets uh, air circulate so no buildup of heat gets transmitted to the actual surface of the ground of any real degree. Um, because it's obviously a fire risk and um, I also have some pegs there which allow me to butt this up so it's, it's pretty secure. So what I'm going to do is this one, obviously, the gas stove is instant. You just spark up, light it, and off you go. But this one here is a little bit different. It takes a bit of prep. So let's get this going. There you go. You can see I've got that going. Let that have a f get a bit of uh, go in it. Because if you drop it in, sometimes it will go out. And then you've got to fish it out. And it's just gone out on me there. Let this get going. There you go. Right, that's off. Now you've got to build a small bit of uh, a fire around it. Instantly, you've got smoke and uh, All the unpleasantness of being that close to it. Right, I've loaded that up as much as I want. Now, I put 
the actual grill on. I'm going to put my can on. And I'm going to put my uh, deflectors on. Obviously watching my hands so I don't get burnt. That's cooking away there. We've now got to get the gas stove going. That's instantaneous. And it's all going now. You can hear that roaring away, but it's gas, so it's a clear flame. You won't uh, see it, but it's doing its thing. The hobo stove, you can see the flame inside. You can see the smoke. I'll bring it down now. It's igniting all that hay, so coming in a short moment, it will start really, really flaming. But straight away, you can see the difference. The smoke coming off that one, and that's clear. Like you say, it, it's a clean burn. That's not a clean burn. I started out at 1615, so let's see how long it takes for it to boil each individual can. There you go, you've got a lot of flame there now with all that hazel going up. And you can see the soot building up on the can already. But, um, you know, if you're wild camping and bushcrafting, you kind of expect that. You can see there the water beginning to bubble and boil around in there on the gas one, so it's, it's getting a lot of heat transmitted to it. And indeed, you know, that water's dirty because those cans ain't been cleaned out, but it does give you an indication, as you can see, things are starting to bubble and boil there. Same there. Well, it's 1619 and we do have a result of such. I'll bring you around. The gas is boiling, uh, so basically, um, you know, that's boiling now, I'll turn it off. That was about ready to boil over. The hobo stove is still going. Um, I'm possibly going to take that off and feed some more wood into it, because it's going to need a little bit more wood just to keep that uh, heat and flame going. As you can see, there's still a flame in there, but it does need more wood. Right, I just had to take that off to load up some more of that wood. I'm just breathing a load of smoke there. As you can see inside now, it's beginning to flame and go. So I should imagine in the next minute or so, I should get boiling water. I had to take the can off the heat using some tools I've manufactured myself. You know, this is part of wild camping and bushcrafting in a more primitive fashion. Um, it's not fast, it's not quick, and it's part of the enjoyment of doing it. But you can see in there, the rest of that hazel has now caught light, and it's doing its job now. So I should get another couple minutes of good solid heat there on that can. But with a hobo stove, due to the size of the fire, you are feeding it constantly. There you go, at 1624, we have another result. We actually have the hobo stove boiling the exact same amount of water. And still a lot of heat there to go. So um, yeah, I'd need to use my tools there, like I said, to remove that can. Um, those guards, like I said, will be scorching hot, you know. The one thing I will say is that uh, this is not a safe practice and you do so at your own risk. But, uh, you know, you are or have to be fully aware of the risks you're taking while, while using or operating this type of equipment to yourself and others. This is one of the advantages. Once you've cooked, you have a flame, which is comforting if you're out wild camping or bushcrafting. Now, as you can see, you know, it's relatively safe. It's got that, you know, 
stand which is keeping it off the ground but he is still being transmitted it is warm and i can see a little piece of ash there so it still needs to be monitored it is a fire it's a live fire and all the safety precautions have to be observed whereas this it's cooled down now you know it's you could pack that up and literally leave that obviously you've got to wait for it to burn out let the ashes cool down do the right thing as in dispose or shall we say um, get rid of the ashes in a safe manner and that means that they would have to be fully cool fully subdued and not a risk to the wildlife or environment um, but you know these are the choices that you have to figure out but as you can see um, the flames have gone out and it would need refeeding again with sticks this is a hungry method of providing heat particularly at this level with sticks and twigs it can be done but you have a very short window of opportunity to cook on and it will need constant feeding it's not like a big fire that is of 8 or 12 inches across which you could use substantial wood to keep yourself going for 20 minutes or 30 minutes this one needs feeding every five minutes inside there you can see some glowing embers and a bit of ash coming out and i've now probably possibly got you know 30 to 40 minutes to let that burn out and cool down i could not just break camp and go like i said with this i would be good to go now i would have had my cup of coffee um, my cup of soup or noodles and i'd be on my way this is a slower method but you have to make your choice and on top of that as you can see a fresh soot here you know you have to have a method of keeping all your kit in kit clean and storage of it because you know you're going to get dirty well i hope you've seen what i was trying to prove there how much faster the gas stove is and how much cleaner efficient the burn less shall we say mess um, you can break camp and move on quicker um, but that comes at a price and that is constantly paying for gas and it's shall we say not such an environmentally friendly way from the point of view you have to buy gas it's in canisters it's been transported to you Whereas the hobo stove, you're using locally sourced materials um, to provide you that cooking um, ability and heat um, that you may require. The thing is, though, the actual hobo stove um, takes twice as long to produce that effect, cooking effect, that you get from the gas and indeed if I was to be cooking on anything larger than that can I would increase that cooking time exponentially um, and that goes without saying as you can probably gather because obviously that heat there was right on the can I've usually used it just to boil up cans of soup where I break the lid get it back and boil up my soup or get it hot enough to eat shall I say not boil it so that's always been satisfactory and I'll use all day breakfast uh, breakfasts in a can and things like that so I've been able to get away with the hobo stove versus buying myself a full-on stick um, stove which you see people use on the internet so what's my conclusion then I mean I you, your conclusions will probably be vastly different than mine I use both methods if I'm out and I know I'm going out for shall we say a more relaxed and I have the weather with me and I want to do things in a more shall we say um, feeling more in nature using what i have in the environment i will take the hobo stove and i will enjoy doing it because once you set up camp you have to feed it you have to source the uh, um, material to feed it and you have to nurture it within that can um, to provide yourself 
the heat. Even when it start, light starts to fade and you don't have a full on campfire, that will need feeding and looking after every five minutes. I have used cans smaller. They are even less efficient. Um, I know people online will show you how to use them. And in an emergency survival situation, you can use them. I mean, hobo cooking on, with cans has been in existence since cans, you know, first came to the fore. And indeed, in the Great Depression in America, it was almost a recognised way of cooking in itself. So, you know, this is nothing new. It's nothing revolutionary. But, you know, if you don't want to buy a firebox, it may be something you want to explore. The gas situation, as in a gas stove, well, that speaks for itself. I don't really need to go any more with that. It's faster, it's cleaner, and in all sense and purposes, it's convenience in a modern form. So, you know, you take your money, you take your pick, you take your choice, as they say. Um, I use both. I will continue to use both. I possibly will never buy a firebox. I will continue with what I'm doing. Safety, guys. I will just come to this. If you're out, you know, using fire, you have to be aware of the safety implications where you are. Nothing's foolproof. You have to be aware of all safety regulations. You have to be aware of even if you're allowed to have a fire in your location. So always look up, always understand and always know um, your limitations using equipment like this. If you can use equipment like this in that area. And indeed, whether you feel safe to use equipment like this, it is fire after all. So I'm just going to wrap that up and say, you know, stay safe, look after yourself. If you don't feel confident using something like this, don't. What I'm doing there is simply entertainment purposes and to give you a clear idea of the um, available options that you may have to you. So... This is Andy from Folklore Hiking Sticks and stay safe and uh, I'll see you again, if not on the trail.